It is a beautiful sunny day here at the nursery and I'm admiring the marsh pitcher plants or Helium Fora. These are another genus of carnivorous plants that I'm absolutely in love with. I'm Dominic here at Redleaf Exotics. Let's get into it. Now you guys know Nepenthes are my absolute favorite, but following them right after them comes this awesome genus, Helium Fora. These plants are related to Sarcinia, the North American pitcher plants, cobra lilies, and they kind of have a similar appearance, but definitely very different once you start getting up close. These plants come from their own little pocket in the world, and that is South America. They're found growing in Venezuela and Guyana, and their habitat is so extreme. These plants are not getting days much higher than 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and the nights can be close to freezing which can make them a little more challenging to grow in cultivation, but they're not that difficult once you get a feel for them and understand what they love. A distinct feature of the genius is this nectar spoon on top. Most of them have it. Some of them are different shapes depending on the species or hybrid, but you could see right underneath it, it just oozes all this beautiful nectar. And that is where insects are gonna come and just fill up on it and probably slide to their death inside the pitcher. Once they do, you could see all these beautiful, silky, glossy hairs. They actually feel so nice to pet, uh, pet. it's so soft. But they're facing downward like this, so anything that falls down and tries to climb up, especially a really small bug, all those hairs are just gonna keep directing it downward. It's not gonna be able to crawl against them, and that's how it directs prey down into the pitcher. Being these plants are from very wet and rainy habitats, they've evolved kind of this slit that's halfway down the pitcher where excess rainwater can drain out and there are hairs that interlace, which prevents any prey or food from flowing out of the pitcher. It's just mind blowing how plants adapt and it just gives you an idea how long that can take for something to adapt and evolve to its environment. It's just so bizarre. Now let's talk about the flowers. They are my favorite in all of the carnivorous plant world. They're so beautiful. They're these white bells that almost look like a pendant lily flower. And they're actually kind of tricky to pollinate. You have to stimulate the buzzing or the vibration of a bee buzzing on by. And what that does is releases the pollen from the pollen sacs. There's kind of no other way to get it. Some people use a toothbrush or I like to vibrate tweezers off my hand and put it next to there and I'll see the pollen come out. And you have to time it just right because the flowers that look like this might be ready to pollinate. A bee will actually climb up in there and get its nectar, but the pollen will not be active. It's usually active on the older flowers. So what makes it impossible for them to self-pollinate, they need the pollen from an older flower to go up into the new one. Kind of tricky, but if you know what you're doing, it's not too difficult. This is one of my favorite species and wasn't discovered that long ago. This is Helium Fora McDonaldae, and it gets these beautiful kind of stout, thick pitchers. Look at the beautiful webbing and veining inside and that rich kind of burgundy purple. Oh my God, it is so spectacular. There haven't been any hybrids made with this species yet, but I'm dying for them to be made because that trait will just come out so nice. And I'll just show you one of my other favorite species. This is Tadii. It produces almost a stem or a trunk as it gets older. And the pitchers are so big and tall. This plant is pretty big, but they can definitely get to here and get quite round, but looking good. And it always puts on a nice show. It's only one of the easier ones for me. It does clump a lot and I'll divide it, but definitely my favorite outside of McDonald Day. This one's also awesome, Helium 4 Uncinata. And the spoon on this is kind of sharp and pointy, which makes it really unique and it gets beautiful color. Another species that does not give me any trouble, even when it's warmer in summer. We certainly don't live in the Tapui Mountains and the plants really don't need those kind of conditions to do well in cultivation. You guys, if you've been watching for a while, you know, in the summer, the greenhouse is in the mid to low 80s in the day. It hovers around 68 to 70. And then once the fall through winter comes, we are going down into the mid 50s and the days can be around 70 to 75 degrees, sometimes 80. So it's not as extreme as in the wild. Um, they love high humidity. That's one of the secrets to them. And they do love getting that temperature drop. A lot of growers that are doing helium for it inside have fish tank setups. 
where they have like an AC and they're cooling it down at night. I mean, we have the evaporative cooling wall that comes on just to exchange the air in the summer, but we're not using like an AC unit or anything to get the temperature lower than it can be just to make these plants happy. Our helium four are also potted in the same mix as our Nepenthes, 50-50 long fiber sphagnum and perlite. They absolutely love it. You could use pure sphagnum. Uh, we've seen growers use lava rock, akadama, pretty much those similar soils that use for all carnivorous plants. I have seen people use peat and perlite. Um, again, like most plants, it really depends on your conditions, but perlite, sphagnum really seems to keep them happy. Like most carnivorous plants, helium-4 do like a fertilizer. It does depend on your conditions. I cannot stress that enough. What works for one might not work for another, but Max-C at one fourth strength applied roughly once a month um, just as a light spray over the pitchers can work wonders. Um, and also natural feeding like insects, crickets, just small things. One little bug per pitcher does more than enough. The species are definitely more finicky with most plants. That's how it goes. But there's a lot of hybrids being created that are more than easy. Uh, Heterodoxa newtons, so easy. Heterodoxa minor, a weed. Um, does not seem to mind warmer temperatures. But things like this TDI, uh, this uh, McDonald A, we have Uncinata over here. These plants really do like to get a nice 15 to 20 degree temperature drop at night. But like I said, in the summer, that's not happening and they do chug on through, they're perfectly fine. But I do notice a nice bump in growth when the fall and the cooler months do come along. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this genus as much as I did. Helium Fora truly are mind blowing. And if you're growing Highland Nepenthes and you don't have any, definitely get into them. They're so awesome to grow. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to check out the other videos on our page. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. It is so helpful to us and we really appreciate it. I'm Dominic here at Redleaf Exotics and I will see you next week for more exotic plants.